Future of Time, Mike Mobley. Uh, and uh, good morning and afternoon to everybody. Um, again, when your topic is the future of time and you're uh, addressing a Christian audience, you might assume that uh, this is about eschatology or end times. Um, but uh, we're only going to touch upon those topics indirectly. And I'm going to open up my screen in a little bit more so I can see it. Uh, instead, we're going to deal with the more fundamental question of that is, what is time from the view of science and the theory of relativity? And we're going to look at how this answer might inform our understanding of God's involvement with his creation. In particular, I'd love to get the perspectives of many of the theologians here. Uh, many people today get their understanding of time and Einstein's special relativity from science fiction, such as Doc Brown in Back to the Future or from Sheldon uh, Cooper in The Big Bang Theory. We've seen movies about time travel and wormholes in time. Uh, they, and most people do understand that Einstein radically changed our understanding of time. But how has it changed and how will it continue to change? Until Einstein, most early philosophers, such as the early Greeks and Aristotle, and uh, early scientists, Galileo and Newton, thought of, uh, in terms of absolute or universal time. This absolute time moves on uniformly, unrelentingly in the background of our universe. The time between two events is the same, no matter who measurements. Time is independent of space. Time can be measured by the motion of objects, through repetitive periodic events, such as the cycles of the moon or the solstice of the sun. Most people today still think of time in this way. Thus, for 2,000 years, this concept of time has influenced how we interpret the Bible and many ideas about eternity. Time is actually the most important measurement parameter in physics. Accurate time measurements were critical to the development of Newton's mechanics and modern physics and technology. Accurate time measurements uh, led to Newton's first law, that objects in motion will stay in motion at the same velocity unless acted on by a force. There is no preferred spatial reference frame. All can be in relative motion. Uh, there is no absolute rest. This actually created a problem for Newton in his Christian faith as he believed the Bible taught a preferred reference frame. Newton's laws are completely symmetric in time. There is no forward or backwards in time. They both look the same. We can get the forward arrow of time due to the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy or disorder in the universe is increasing. Therefore, the universe must have had an ordered beginning. It cannot be infinite in age. Einstein radically changed our concept of time with the uh, special theory of relativity. This theory is framed on two postulates. The speed of light is constant in the, and the same in all reference frames. The laws of physics are the same in all reference frames. Again, there is no preferred reference frame. The theory also has some underlying basic assumptions that space and time dimensions can be described in terms of rigid rods and synchronized clocks. Synchronized clocks are clocks at equal distance from a light flash that read the same time when the light reaches each of them. The theory ha also has some tacit or, uh, or limiting assumptions. Um, this does not describe the microscopic quantum world or the galactic world. This treats time as infinite, uh, as we are only describing a very small slice of time. These familiar equations are for the mathematicians and, and physicists in this lecture, and I apologize for those of you who are not, but I share them to demonstrate that time can be described in mathematical terms. The motion of light in two reference frames and relative motion are related by this equation with the prime frame moving along the x-axis. This is a mathematical statement of the constant speed of light. Uh, again, a, a familiar units conversion is used, setting the speed of light equal to one. From this, we were de derived the Lorentz differential transformations of special relativity. 
these indicate that length contraction and time dilation when we are changing uh, reference frames. I've circled in red the time transformation. Einstein demonstrated that a change in position or motion in one reference frame is transformed into a change in time in another. This, radically, uh, this radical new insight comes from the differential marked by the blue arrow, the motion in the primed frame. From this, we see that space and time are therefore inextricably connected in a four-dimensional space-time. But there's more to this relation of space and time, and we're going to examine this a little bit further. Again, what the, uh, the differential that I've got in blue is a key to understanding time. What are some of the lessons from Einstein's special relativity? What does it mean? Time is relative. There is no absolute time, no universal clocks. Events appearing simultaneously in one reference frame uh, system based upon clock synchronization may not be simultaneous in another. Causality is not violated, but synchronization is not simultaneity. The faster one goes, the slower the clocks run in all physical processes. The speed of light is the fastest we can transfer mass and energy. There was another important implication to special relativity if we assumed Newton's laws that momentum must be conserved. To conserve momentum, mass transforms with a change in reference frame in proportion to time. This is an alternative form of Einstein's familiar equation for the change in kinetic energy equal E equals mc squared. This points to the direct connection between mass and time. This suggests that particles do not reside in time. They are part of the structure of time. Time and space and matter are all interwoven in the fabric of our universe. Time has structure. In the study of special relativity, Professor Hermann Minkowski developed a useful metric to relate the motion of an object or clock in one reference frame to that in another. Here, where T0 is the time in the reference frame where an object or a clock is stationary or at rest is the rest frame. Rearranging the Minkowski metric suggests that there is an internal motion to all objects and particles, and that this may be at the speed of light. This last term, the T0 term that is circled, can be acquainted with the internal motion of a particle or object in the rest frame at the speed of light. This has been recognized by many physicists. One of the earliest to recognize this possibility was Erwin Schrödinger, one of the founders of quantum mechanics, who describes this in German as Zitterwebegang, or trembling motion, and uh, to avoid the tongue twister, I may refer to this as zitter. Schrodinger's analysis of Dirac's relativistic equation for the electron identified a spin motion of the electron at the speed of light. Since then, several authors have suggested an electron model of a point charge with a helical motion that accounts for the spin, angular momentum, and attributed mass and in internal clock of the electron. For example, in 1952, Wang stated, the well-known Zitterwebegun may be looked upon as a circular motion about the direction of the electron spin. The intrinsic spin of the electron may be looked upon as the orbital angular momentum of this motion. So with this framework, assuming, assuming internal motion for quantum particles, let's now go back to the future of time. At this point, I am uh, referencing some more recent publications and new speculation on the nature of time that is an extension of our learning from special relativity. Our definition for time equates time with the differential, uh, the time differential, with the spatial displacements or zitter of described quantum particle subcomponents that are moving at the speed of light. 
Time is motion, and the speed of light defines the speed of time. Time has a beginning. To reflect upon what this means, suppose the speed of light was infinite. Then the time between the beginning of the universe and its end is zero. The fact that the speed of light is finite is what spaces out the events in our world. The motion of these quantum particle subcomponents provides real, physical, and geometric meaning to the proper time parameter. This is the simplest representation of the Zitter model, a simple rotor, rigid rotor model with subcomponents moving at the speed of light. Again, the speed of light is the speed of time. The rigid rotor is the simplest Zitter model, but I don't want to leave you with a incomplete understanding of the potential of the Zitter model. Uh, here I present a variation of that model where the electron is composed of two rotating strings that draws upon insights from modern string theory. These particles are embedded within a web of strings. Again, using the equations of special relativity, we can compare the rotation of two uh, electrons in relative motion or even the uh, motion of clocks. By synchronized clocks, when a rotating electron in a prime frame is moving away from an electron in a stationary frame, the translated electron will rotate more slowly than the phase, uh, such that the phase separation or parent time lag will be equal to the distance of separation. This is independent of velocity. velocity. Separation and distance is separation in time. These results suggest examining an alternative definition for simultaneity. Our current convention of synchronous time comes from Einstein and special relativity. We can propose an alternative convention that also preserves causality, but better represents dynamic electromagnetic fields and quantum particle motions, isochronous time. In isochronous time, two events should be described as simultaneous if they can be linked by a signal traveling at the speed of light. This can be described mathematically. If we use synchronized clocks and event at time t with coordinates x, y, and z, will be simultaneous to the time at the origin minus the distance shown here. This convention will maintain time-space symmetry about an individual point as we make reference frame transformations. Some scientists have referred to this as dichronic time or retarded time. Does Two minutes, this, Michael. Two minute okay. warning. Does this convention seem strange? This isochronous time convention is the one we actually use and experience every day because the speed of light is finite. When we view the Milky Way and point to the stars thousands of light years away, to our perception and in our reference frame, the light reaching our eyes is simultaneous. So let's wrap up what physics is telling us. Time is motion. Time is relative. Time is linked to space and matter. Time has a beginning. What are the theological implications? Time, space, and matter that make up our universe are all interwoven, created entities. God as creator must exist outside of time, space, and matter. God acts in space and time, but is not constrained by space and time. The past, present, and future are all within God's sight. You might say that they are all now to God. And miracles our evidence, a sovereign God controls space, time, and matter. So a question for our theologians to think about is, by changing the future, does God actually alter the apparent past, or does God need to change anything? Just to give you something else to ponder here, um, think of our universe as a DVD that is being played out from beginning, beginning to end to tell our story. The whole story from beginning to end is encoded within the DVD. The creator and director of the story remains outside the story with full knowledge of the story and the ability to record and recode and edit any part of the story. The creator knows how the story ends, perhaps in the end of time, 
we will be outside of the DVD, sitting around in a theater, commenting on the story we participated in. Perhaps we will even discuss this lecture on time and laugh. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, great, okay. Questions for Michael Mobley. I see you, Chris Baragar. Uh, thanks for that, Mike. Uh, a quick physics question: uh, cyclical models of the universe with, uh, you know, with a big bounce instead of a big bang are, are popular. But you uh, described, uh, you said time has a beginning. Could you just uh, discuss those two positions? Do they fit together or not? Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, just suggesting that uh, again. Looking at any kind of either big bang or uh, uh, dynamic activity that begins in our universe that's associated with time and then we see an expansion i.e with the big bang maybe starting from something close to a singularity so there is an arrow of time from from that point of view again then you're talking about other physical characteristics to our universe whether there is a, an expansion and then a contraction i'm i'm not sure how to describe that if there's a contraction, and I doubt that it can all go back to the same point. But, you know, I would suggest that time has a beginning. I don't know, you know, in terms of the models we have for physics, what it says about an end. Seth Hart. Hey, thank you so much. Um, you'll have to forgive the ignorance of this question. I'm not a physicist, um, but it's something I wanted to pose and my knowledge of the subject is fairly rudimentary. Uh, but there is a host of theologians, philosophers, and I think a few physicists who've argued uh, that I've seen have argued that the measure of time uh, that you see used in relativity theory uh, denotes the metric of time or a measure of time rather than time in some sort of metaphysical sense. And a lot of these, their agenda is always to sort of preserve a God who exists in time in an absolute now who doesn't exist That's weird. we gotta move quick can you get right. to the question yeah yeah and i just wanted to i wanted to uh, ask you is that possible that god like is it is relativity theory just measuring a metric of time a measure rather than that sorry about that sorry yeah i'm, I'm taking a physicist's point of view that time is uh interwoven part of the structure of the universe as a created entity so I'm trying to avoid commenting that a lot of theologians have said that there is another realm in which God exists where there is another, i.e., type of time. That may exist. Some people have said there was a, you know, descriptions in the Bible of before the creation and or after the creation. And, and so I can't deal with that. I'm just giving you the sense of within our measurable physical universe, time and physics you know, of our universe are inter integr uh, integrated together. There's one structure. Great. Uh, Randy, is it really quick? Very quick. Michael, thank you very much. Just want to ask about your isochronous uh, notion since gravitational fields affect the rate of clocks. How is that taken into account? Looks like as if you only have distance in, in, involved. No, that, that, that can be consistent. In fact, what I'm suggesting, it probably is more consistent uh, because there's a, an, an improved symmetry to isochronous time over what we're talking about in terms of, you know, uh, synchronous time that Einstein has been using. So, uh, yeah, now when you get into, you know, very dense activities, then the question is, what is the shape of time in that particular case? Isochronous time primarily deals with that there is a, a point around which time is defined, you know, rather than a whole reference frame. So that actually can be fairly consistent with things around the idea of gravity too. I'm not sure if I've explained that to you, but. Uh, we, we're gonna move on.